Hello and welcome back to Underlab. Metaton is the number one personality within the underground. Created by Alphys, his origins are in dispute. It seems certain that he was originally a ghost, before he was implanted within a robotic body. But from there on out, things become unclear. Was he really designed with anti-human features in mind? Does he have a body surpassing even his neoform? And if so, what would it look like? Finally, who needs arms when you've got legs like those? Metaton didn't become so famous by hiding away in the shadows. So let's try to get to the bottom of who and what Metaton really is, and why his neoform is such a pushover. Metaton is praised as Alfie's creation, but how much did she really create? Metaton isn't an artificial intelligence, as we're led to believe. He's in fact the cousin of Napsterblook, a ghost who lives within Waterfall. Like the Mad Dummy, these ghosts are capable of possessing inanimate objects. All Alphys had to do was to make a body with moving joints for Metaton to take control of. However, he wasn't content with just that. He wanted a photogenic body as he aspired to become a star to everyone on the planet. This surely resulted in the creation of his EX form, a flamboyant metallic body seemingly fashioned after the appearance of a human adult. The only thing that doesn't fit into all of this is his Neo form, Neo means new, implying that the Neo body is Alfie's most recent improvement to the robot. This doesn't seem to add up though, as Metaton tells us on the genocide path that the Neo form exists due to him originally being built for the purpose of human eradication. Meanwhile, on any other route, we face his EX form, and he tells us that it's the debut of his new body. Something just isn't adding up here. His Neo form seems to be perfectly photogenic already, and so are we really to believe that this was the first body that Alfie's created for him? Why did he want a different body for the sake of performance? It gets even more confusing when we factor in Metaton's multi multiple diaries to the equation. His last diary entry explains that Alphys has devised a body for him beyond his wildest dreams, which is surely referring to either his EX or Neo form. This was before he was even a robot, and it seems to make the most sense if it was his Neo body. As we've been told this was made first, and it's easy to understand why Metaton would praise Alphys' creation so much considering its appearance. All of this leads us to question why his other two forms were created, namely his standard form and his EX form. Then we have other curious details to consider. Metaton's Neo form has insanely high attack, but very low defense implying it's almost like some sort of unfinished prototype. He seems to think he'd stand a better chance against us on the genocide path by using this body, which seems to imply he doesn't know his own weakness. He would have actually done better using his more balanced EX form, or even his default form that's supposedly completely invincible. Metaton seems to be completely unaware of the true strength of each of his forms, which wouldn't make sense unless it's possible that Alphys has been lying to him. This certainly wouldn't be the first time she's lied. In fact, she has quite a habit for deceiving others. Normally it's because she feels that certain people would be better off not knowing knowing what she does, as sometimes the truth is hard to swallow. This undoubtedly applies in the case of the Amalgamates, her accidental creation within the True Laboratory that seems to be the source of all her stress, anxiety and paranoia. But what about Metaton? In what way could she have lied to him? She must have given him a good reason to want a body other than his Neo form, as it already seems to have everything that the robot ghost wanted. Could it be that she somehow led Metaton to believe that she could create an even better body for the sake of his performances, when really she wanted to upgrade him to a form that lacks the vulnerability in its defence? What reason could Alphys possibly have for not telling Metaton the truth about his own body's capabilities? One possibility I've already talked about in my theory called Metaton's True Origins is that Metaton agreed to being weaponized in exchange for his beautiful new body. The purpose of this would have been to help Asgore defeat seven humans and collect their souls for his plan to break the barrier. It seems very strange though that the Neo form would have such high attack. Is it possible that Alphys was so intensely focused upon creating a weapon that she forgot it would also need a way of defending itself? Metaton's default form seems to be the opposite. It doesn't do much damage to us, but it has a higher defense than any other monster in the game, as Metaton can just shrug off attacks like it's nothing. Even Sans at least makes the effort to dodge your blows. The EX form meanwhile, as I mentioned, seems to be the most balanced. It can soak up a lot of damage while also dishing it out itself. It's it also appears to be the body Metaton is happiest in, as it's by far the most fabulous. Metaton's EX form therefore seems to be the ultimate version of Metaton. His Neo form lacks defense, and his default form lacks attack. Only his EX form has a bit of both. But why stop there? It's clear that Alphys intended to make even further improvements to Metaton's body. After all, his EX form wasn't meant to be revealed yet. This is most likely because of its low battery life, as if we choose to spare Metaton, he runs out of power and is unable to keep fighting. It's easy to believe that Alphys was surely planning on building a fourth and final 
form for Metaton, one that would have had the Neo form's incredible attack power, the default form's defense, and the distribution of the X form. She could have done all this under the guise of wanting to make each and every performance of Metaton's better than the last, and he surely would have been more than happy to let his body be her personal side project. For what reason would she go to such lengths, you may be wondering. We have to remember that her experiments with soul magic within the true laboratory were a critical failure. Their original purpose was always to allow the soul of a monster to persist after death like that of the humans. However, not only did it fail to have that result, but it had the bizarre side effect of transforming the dying monsters into amalgamates. This led Alphys to have something of a complete mental breakdown, and it turns her from an anime watching nerd into a complete introvert afraid of the consequences of her own actions. It's no surprise that she decided to revert to working on more reliable experiments. Metaton was one she could always depend on, as her initial effort to create a body for the ghost had been a success. It seems natural that her paranoia would lead her to only work on the one thing that she knew she couldn't mess up. In turn, she'd have been working to break the barrier, just like Asgore would have wanted. By making an incredibly powerful robot who just so happened to be a great dancer, she could ensure that Asgore would get the seventh soul he required in order to complete his plan. That's why Metaton seems to come equipped with all manner of dangerous weapons, particularly the chainsaw he uses on his cooking show and the various bombs he uses against us. These are likely Alfie's attempts at making Metaton more dangerous, rather than defensive, as she must have realised that a good amount of both is required to defeat a human. His final form would surely embody all of the more powerful aspects of his other three bodies, and what could get him better ratings than becoming the ultimate defender of monster kind. It's true enough that we never see Alphys working on an additional form for Metaton, but we have to remember that his EX form apparently isn't finished. Maybe the EX form is his final form, and is supposed to combine his Neo and default forms. However, as it's unfinished, that's why it's still beatable. Keep this in mind, Alphys specifically told us to get him to turn around, so that we could flip the switch on his back and trigger the transformation early. This proves that she knew about the EX form's vulnerability and though it can take a lot more damage than the Neo form, it still hasn't been perfected, which explains why Metaton isn't literally invincible. So what's the overall point I'm trying to make? Well I think I've cleared up a few mysteries. Metaton's Neo form certainly has the photogenic look Metaton was after, and it may very well have been created first. However, it seems Alphys somehow convinced him to stop using it as she wanted to improve on the design of his body. That or his Neo form isn't even a proper configuration devised by Alphys, and is instead just him combining various weapons with his EX form. However, the former seems more likely as the default form for Metaton is completely invincible. This shows that Alphys was trying to rectify the lack of defence his Neo form has, but she accidentally went too far the other way. His EX form is her latest revision on Metaton's body, but even that isn't finished. It has problems with its battery life and it's still yet to reach the levels of attack and defence of its other two forms. What then is Metaton's final form? Well, if Alphys hadn't decided to root for us and instead kept working on improving Metaton as she surely meant to, she would have made a non-invincible robot with insanely high attack. In other words, Metaton would have been the strongest enemy in the entire game. I suppose it's a good thing that Alfie's never finished her work. What a fabulous episode! Metaton is a peculiar character within Undertale as he bridges the gap between human and monster. Really, he's a monster who just wants to be a star, specifically a star who impresses humans. That's surely why he requested that Alphys makes him a body that resembles a human's. What do you think? Do you agree that Alphys likely had further improvements in mind for Metaton? As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Try not to get kicked off the dance stage, and I'll see you next time! Before I go, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. My head scientists, Asgore and She, Cameron Vihill, Kay Jensen, Sophronius, Zoada Vionta, and Isidro54321. And my underlab scientists, Crystal Sleet, Nicholas Ducks, Armin Arlet, Marisa Ray, Corey Kidwell, Yusho Groni, Sarah Wydra, and Emily Gatewood. Thanks to all the names you see here, this channel is able to keep going. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out the Patreon link below, as well as the video that explains why I'd so massively appreciate your contribution.